All right, Mr. Mayor, it's uh, now one o'clock and we are ready when you are. All right, thank you, Isaiah. It is Thursday, June 17th. It's approximately one o'clock. This is the regular meeting of the City Council, the Library and Observatory Board, Housing and Authority Board, and the City Council representing the redevelopment successor agencies. Isaiah, would you lead us in a flag salute, please? Yeah, I'll have uh, Jeremy Glime, our Development Services Director, lead us today. Yes, thank you. Please stand. And begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, may we have a roll call, Christy, please? Councilmember Hobart? He's muted. Oh. No. You're good now. We can hear you. Present. Councilmember Kite? Here. Councilmember Smotrich? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Here. Mayor Weil? Here. Uh, we have a presentation now by uh, Cindy Burson, Children Discovery Museum, Chief Executive Officer. Isaiah, you might want to handle that introduction. Yeah, come on up, Cindy. Thank you for uh, joining us today. I got a little preview of the information that uh, we are going to hear. And uh, as a user of the museum with my kids, uh, I was very excited to hear the information. So, Cindy, thanks for being here today and take it away. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Honorable Mayor Weil, City Council, City staff, and everyone that's here today and virtually, thank you so much for having me back again. The last time I was here to present to you, I was the interim CEO, and I was speaking mostly about how the pandemic had affected the museum and sort of our hopeful wishes for what the future might be. And now I return as the full-time CEO, and I've been in this position for 90 days, and we have accomplished a lot in those 90 days, and we're even more hopeful than ever. So I'm happy to share that with you today. Oops. So the first thing that we did after coming out of uh, the pandemic and sort of realizing what we needed to do for the future is we came up with a strategy with Hands On, which was our original exhibitry company that we had worked with about 22 years ago. They created a lot of the exhibits that still remain in the museum and we realized that we needed to do a reimagination starting with our strategy and our vision statement. So we did some exploration with staff, with uh, our board and with the community to find out what the needs were that were not being met in the community as far as informal learning venues and how we could possibly fill in those gaps and how we can also broaden our audience to serve more of our community and more of the age ranges than we were currently. Right now, the museum had been serving zero to eight-year-olds very well, and then there was sort of a drop-off there for older kids. So we decided that we were gonna use the lens of creativity to create a vital and sustainable resource, and that's the lens that we're looking at with all of the different facets of the museum. This is the museum. The, all of the dark white parts are what are currently there, and then you will see a future expansion. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit today about what the different phases are that we are hopeful for in that expansion. The first phase, which we are working on right now, is the main gallery, which we're calling the Children's Museum. And we're focusing on birth to eight years old with different exhibit experiences, loose parts, less programming in this space, and more experiences for kids to create their own um, experiences and not be so literal with them, but present them opportunities to create their own fun and learning. The budget for this building is 2.9 million. So we're currently in fundraising mode, as you can imagine. My goal is by the end of this year to raise 1.5 million, so we're about halfway there. And that puts us into next summer with regard to uh, conceptualization, fabrication, and so forth. The next phase is going to be the studio, which is the center building on the property. It's going to be the age focus of five to 14. This will have some exhibition, but it will also have a lot of flexible activity space and opportunities for the older kids to be involved with different types of activities. Um, and that budget is about 800,000. 
The next phase will be what we're currently calling the lab, which is one of my favorite buildings. It's a standalone building that has its own facilities, its own entrance, and its own parking structure. And this is going to be geared more towards the eight-year-olds and up to adults. We're hoping that this will be a really flexible activity space, also a revenue generating space, and a place where we can address the needs that I talked about earlier, like life skills and things that older kids, adults, and caregivers need that may not be met right now. And it's a great place because of all of those things I mentioned before, because the older kids don't have to go through the kids museum to get to that space. Next on the expansion will be, well, maybe it'll catch up in a second. It will be our exterior. So we have some plans for the exterior um, that will be constantly something we're working on, but this will be the next phase and an ongoing phase that will address most ages. And it's gonna have gross motor experiences, things like jungle gyms, confidence courses, all different types of things throughout the property. And then the final phase, which had actually been designed several years ago, was a future expansion. And the future expansion will take our existing lobby and administrative offices and build up, moving the administrative offices upstairs and creating that space into a toddler town. And then the future expansion um, the entire, in its entirety will be about 22,000 square feet. And there will be additional exhibitory spaces in that future expansion that you see there in blue. So right now, I'm excited to talk about the plan that we are currently fundraising for. This is building one. And what we did is we took the lens of creativity and created six different sections within the museum. As you can see, they are creative ways to explore, creative ways to experiment, to move, to express, to imagine, and to dream. So I'm gonna explain a little bit about each of those sections and give you kind of an idea of what experiences will be in each. The first, oh, this is actually a density study that shows you all of the different experiences within the museum, that particular building. There are over 40. So the first thing that we decided to do was work on Imagine, which is the entryway to the museum. So when you open the door and you have the trellis there, and currently it's very, not very colorful, not very fun, um, we're gonna change that whole viewpoint. So it's gonna be very imaginative, hence the name Imagine, where kids can come in there and feel like they're in a garden tea party. It's gonna be very whimsical, very fantastic, but it's going to be reminiscent and um, representative of the valley's flora and fauna. Some of the experiences that we will have in that space are going to be things like a hedge theater it's going to have um, walls that are painted like a garden with costumes on the back. It'll have a little cafe type front where kids can cook things and serve things to their caregivers. There will be bistro tables and chairs in that space. They'll be able to learn about different flowers that are indigenous to this area and insects. There will be opportunities for art projects similar to the build a sculpture there where we'll commission a local artist to create a work of art and then have stations around that work of art that kids can kind of create their own uh, version of that. There will be a large topiary. We think it's gonna be a rabbit because that's sort of representative of this area and what's on the golf courses and what we see a lot here. This is gonna be a beautiful entry to get kids and families really excited about this new project. The next space is MOVE, which is facilitated naturally by the walls that are currently in the building. As you can see in that pink space, it naturally makes you move through there. The part on the right is a rock wall, rock climbing wall. It's going to have a mural behind it. It's gonna be about three times the size of the rock wall that we currently have. Right in the middle is going to be a noodle forest, if you will. The picture on the bottom right sort of shows what that will look like. And then to the left will be a 14 foot tall rope climbing structure. It will have not only a rope structure that you can climb across like a bridge, but the 14 foot struck chimney will come through the top and you'll be able to have a bird's eye view of the whole museum. The next section, and this is one of my favorites, is express. The structure that you see in the middle, I'm gonna show you in a second. That's one of my favorite parts, but we're actually building a structure within the building. 
And inside of it and on the outside of it, we're going to have all of these different experiences where kids can express themselves, not in the usual way, but with light and with the light bright that we currently have, expressing themselves with their words, with a response wall so they can leave something behind, such as what do you want to be when you grow up or how are you feeling today, those types of things. The light sculpture prism wall will have the opportunity for kids to have magnetic mirrors and lenses that they can create these different types of sculpture, sculptures that are non-traditional. And this will be the structure that is built inside. It's a lighthouse, if you will, and we're going to pull it apart so that you have the experience of different um, activities on the inside and the outside. And the stained glass that you see there will actually be dichromatic film so it will create a beautiful prismatic kaleidoscope when the natural sunlight comes through that space. The largest part in the museum will be the experiment section. And this is going to be a great opportunity for kids not only to experiment, but to interact with their families because the, it's a very hands-on experience with different geometric panels and blocks. Up in the top right, you see it's a scarf blower. It's actually really tall, about 12 feet tall where kids can redirect forced air through those pipes, sending the different colored scarves in the air and, and seeing how that sort of works. So it's very scientific, very fun, different types of things. Right in the middle, there's a pinball golf that's going to be sort of a miniature golf where the kids and their caregivers can mix up the different obstacles that are on the inside of that to see how the balls will get into the hole at the bottom. The next space is Explore. This is the final space downstairs, and this will be towards the back of the building. This is going to be our toddler town. So it's going to be a safe space. It's increasing the footprint of the toddler town we currently have. It'll have the space down at the lower left that you see actually has a half wall, so it will be gated in there for the little littles that are learning to walk and that might need a little more of a safer environment with soft mats and rails that they can pull themselves up with. There will be a touch wall that you can see on the top right in a couple of different sections that's sort of a busy activity wall for kids. And then there will be a pour and measure station and also a parental resource station um, for families and caregivers to come in there and they can read about other things in the community and they can read about different resources they may need as parents. And then the final section is upstairs. <laughs> and it is called it is Dream. Oh, I'm echoing. <laughs> um, the Dream section is going to be a calming space for those not only on the sensory spectrum, but also those that just might need a break from all of the activity of the museum. It's a quieter space that's going to be sort of reminiscent of a mountain escape. So when you come up the stairs, it's going to have mountain cutouts. There will be a starry sky and a camping opportunity, a fishing activity, a waterfall wall, and then sensory toys and other types of things that will um, be advantageous for those that just need to take a break and, and have an opportunity to relax. So this is sort of a fun way to show you what it could possibly look like. This is the museum um, from the vantage point of the windows um, that face out towards Gerald Ford looking in. This gives you a good cross section of the lower floor of the building. And this is what it would look like with nothing in it and no color. And this is what it could potentially look like with all of the different activities inside. So this shows you the theater is on the bottom left, the, uh, the art activity there. You can see how beautiful that wall is going to be with the, there's actually a hummingbird on it. There's succulents and all kinds of beautiful flora and fauna from the desert. The rock climbing wall, we will also commission with a local artist to have a mural behind that. And you can see the lighthouse, which is so beautiful, and the rope structure in the back and the scarf blower in the back, and then some of the experiment opportunities there as well. So it's very exciting, very different from before, but I think it's gonna be a very welcome change. And of course, we thank the city of Rancho Mirage for your ongoing support and partnership throughout the years. It's been a long time that we've been around and we expect to be around for a lot longer. And thank you so much. And I welcome any questions you may have. Cindy, that is, <clears throat> that, that is terrific. Um, we've heard such good things about your involvement 
Uh, I know Richard has talked about it because he's on the board. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have heard just uh, excellent, excellent reports. And your description of the different experiences is exciting. So we welcome your participation. Thank you. Mayor? Yes, Mayor? Richard. Yes, Richard. Uh, Cindy has put together a great board of directors from the community, and this is going to make the, the program and the museum more successful. And we've got two co-chairs of the, of the board. One is Katie Stice, whom all of you know, and the other individual is Davis Meyer. They're both really out there recruiting, uh, looking for various uh, potential financial sites that we can talk to. And it's really exciting to see where we were a year ago as opposed to where we are now. What a turnaround. And we really are excited about this. Um, Cindy, Cindy, are you still there? I am. Uh, if people want to get more information on the museum or work with the board or make a contribution, how would they go about doing that? So you can go to our website, which is cdmod.org. You can reach out to me directly by email, which is exec, E-X-E-C, at cdmod.org as well. Okay. Hopefully you'll be overwhelmed with, with people wanting to help you. I'm ready to go. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cindy. That was excellent. Very exciting. We now uh, will go to uh, non-agenda public comments. Isaiah, if you would, please. Sure. Uh, this is the opportunity for any member of the public to speak on items that are not on today's agenda for a maximum of three minutes per speaker. Uh, if you are participating remotely and you'd like to make a non-agenda public comment, now is the time to do so. You would hit the raise hand button on Zoom, or if you're on your telephone, you would hit star nine. Is there anyone else, uh, or is there anyone here in person that would like to make a non-agenda public comment? I do have one speaker card. Okay. For Susie Del Toro. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council. My name is Susie Del Toro. I am the founder for Freedom Flags for Families. And first of all, I wanna, if there's any veterans here in the house, I wanna go ahead and thank them for their service. So I don't know if there's any veterans. There is. Uh, I'm here to present a project, hopefully you will approve. This project is to give some recognition to the local veterans of Rancho Mirage. Um, and, I have this project, which is a military, military flag banner. And this military flag banner can be flown at your city. I have these military flag banners in Palm Springs and Desert Hot Springs, Palm Springs Air Museum, and also in the city of Coachella. So I'm hoping that you will approve this project so some of our local veterans will be, get the recognition, fly these military flags in the city of of Rancho Mirage. Okay. In your package, where I will leave with Christy, we'll have some information regarding my project, another project I have, which is veterans also, which is, I do a veterans breakfast in November, and I also put wreaths at the local cemetery in Coachella, Coachella Valley Cemetery, three times a year, which is for Memorial, Veterans, and Christmas. And there's also uh, statistics regarding how many veterans we have in the district, the fourth district, too, okay? So I'm hoping that um, you approve this project here and hope to hear from you soon. Don't know if anybody has any questions for me. Uh, I'm just gonna briefly let you know how it works in the city of Coachella. The city of Coachella has put these banners in their budget. So it's no cost to our local veterans in the city of Coachella. It's rotated. They are flown on 6th Street for a whole year. In November, when I do my uh, veterans breakfast, they're they were taken down, and then they are presented to the family free of cost. So the family gets to keep them. And then we rotate. Whoever's on the next the list, 
their military flags would be flown on for a whole year. So they rotated. So other cities have also been put on their budget or they're being sponsored by local businesses too. Okay. So if anybody has any questions, you want to turn it around, Jackie, so they can see it. Can I uh, make a, a request? Yes. Perhaps, uh, perhaps the uh, proposal could uh, start with a copy of the flag or whatever it is yes. uh, being uh, given to city staff okay. to uh, have inside the city staff area so that those uh, among the council veterans, and I think there are a bunch of them, uh, and those who are not on the council but are veterans, it'll be in a position where it can be seen, yes. and then you can put it back on the agenda for the next meeting or the meeting after, and you'll get a vote on it that way. Okay, great, no problem. It's got, I have my business card in the package, Christy, so I'll leave them to you. You can pass them out. And all that information, uh, like I said, it does have the statistics on the fourth district, how many veterans we have in their branches, how many females and how many males there is. Any other questions, gentlemen, ma'am? Okay, I thank you. I really appreciate your attention to this matter. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else here in person that would like to make a non-agenda public comment? All right, we'll go to the remote audience. Elena Kalamanis. Thank you very much. I know I've spoken to you before and I apologize. I thought it would be easier to do a presentation, uh, but unfortunately I didn't realize we could not do that over Zoom. And so what I want, uh, Christy did do a wonderful job of forwarding to you. If you can follow it now, it would be great. If you can't, please look at it later. Uh, chart two shows the three stages. Back when section 31 was approved, the, the, city, uh, the state was white. Now we're all red, so we are in an extreme drought. Uh, the next chart talks about the Colorado River supplying our aquifer. It is very obvious, and, and any news article you see, the Colorado River is, is under incredible stress. And what happens at that point when um, reservoir le le levels drop in Lake Mead, it's going to trigger, even in the state of California, some mandatory um, uh, conservation measures. I made a copy of the page. I looked at the environmental impact report and I have highlighted three areas in the page where in the environmental report, if you look under the project impact for water, there I've circled the part that says substantially decreases groundwater supplies. So that is what the environmental impact report showed. And it says it's potentially significant as the water impact of the project. Now, what is to the right of that is what's the mitigation? The mitigation says the project applicant shall pay groundwater replenishment fees to CVWD to offset the Grand Oasis Lagoon private well water usage. If you notice on my prior chart, the, um, the, our aquifer is refreshed by the Colorado River. If we don't get this water, that means this project will be decreasing based on the environmental re impact report. It will be in decreasing the supply. Um, so that is, is terrible. So the next page shows the downward trend. Already this past 2020, the aquifer is being recharged less. The CVW water assessment talks about, on the bottom I've circled, the Crystal Lagoon uh, using the evaporation technology. What's in the report is the next page, which is WaterGuard. And I talked to the people at WaterGuard. There is no product available in the United States that does the evaporation control. So the other 34 acre lagoon on the next page is the one in Egypt that's filled with 62 million gallons of salty water. That, so they don't have to be concerned with, with any chemicals. 
you know, they can cool it from the underwater aquifer. We can't do that with our pool. Um, and I think what I need to ask you is you take a look at this. You have an obligation to the citizens and the Coachella Valley to put the Section 31 groundbreaking on hold for a few months until you have your team review all the water assumptions, irregularities I mentioned. You're out of time. Please of wrap up your drought. comment. Right. And the impact of one sentence left and the impact of the drought on the ability to go on with this project. It's critically important that you look at this because with the Colorado River not supplying aquifer water, the aquifer will go down substantially. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. The next speaker is Brad Anderson. Hi, uh, my name is Brad Anderson. I live in the city of Rancho Mirage. There's so many topics to talk about today, but uh, your last caller, uh, the, the speaker about Area 31, which most people probably don't know anything about, she's got outstanding points and they should be considered. And I would suggest that the city really look at that, especially the one council member that's been voting on items of Area 31 where she probably shouldn't be, and that's something to consider. Uh, and uh, and I think I saw him busting a well or maybe installing a well up there the other day. So something to consider uh, in the long term uh, because I think that's going to be an issue for uh, years to come. But uh, I wanted to talk about the Vector District and the Palm Springs Cemetery District and the shenanigans going on over there. But I'm going to go ahead and address my comments towards the uh, Discovery Museum that you just had a presentation on. And I think the term imagine, I think, wasn't that suggested by one of your uh, your companies for promotion or uh, items for the city? And this may be hand in hand with that. I don't know. But uh, I thought, well, you better be careful. Somebody's going to sue somebody. But anyway, uh, I I think, yeah, that as we know, that museum has been unutilized. I can't pronounce my stuff today but it hasn't been up to scale or what it could be and i think the council knows that for years and uh and uh revamping it of course is a good thing but uh i think they're going to come to the city for more finances and support it which would benefit the city but i think it's kind of been a cash cow well, not a cash cow but uh a, I guess uh, a liability for the city for a long time. And the city, as we, as you may recall, we do invest most of the city agreed to do investments for that or, uh, private organization. And and you have board members that, uh, or yeah, board members, uh, council members that sit on that board. And they have in the past where they made votes concerning uh, stuff concerning that. Uh, uh, I want to call it a vector district, but concerning that organization, and they probably should have done that because they do have an interest in it. And even the uh, art, uh, local artists, I have an issue with that, the rabbit thing, and, and we kind of, I well, I can't go into details about that, but you have a city, you have a council member that uh, in, in, I want to say in bed, but, uh, <laughs> you know, part of that system, too, with uh, supporting that uh, mass produce art so uh that's really all i have i know uh, i don't have anything positive so uh, uh thank you very much bye-bye thank you for your comment uh seeing no other speakers we will close the non-agenda public comment period and i'll return this back to you mr mayor okay thank you isaiah we'll now go to uh, council board member comments iris Thank you, Ted. Uh, yes, I do have a comment and it's a very exciting one. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I wanna share some very exciting news, uh, not just for Rancho Mirage, but for the entire Coachella Valley. And that is uh, the Rancho Mirage has a new birth center. Mini, Matt, Marty Massiello, the new president and chief executive officer for Eisenhower Health stated, envision a future where Eisenhower's relentless pursuit of excellence elevates us to the highest levels, claiming our position among the top rated and most revered hospitals in the country. So, uh, Jason, could you put up the slides? I believe we have one slide that... Jason, can you hear me? Okay. We don't, uh, Ted, we don't how about have a slide. 
Pardon me? Uh, they just, uh, they don't have a slide. Well, there's supposed to be several slides, like eight slides. So uh, why don't we, you know, have uh, Jason go ahead and see if he can find them and maybe go on to another council member's uh, comments. All righty. Uh, Richard, do you have any comments? No comments. Thank you. Dana, any comments today? Thank you, but none. Thank you, Charlie. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, nor do I. Uh, that would conclude our council comments. Um, unless you have something I else. Wait, I will wait until the next council meeting to talk about uh, the Monsignor Howard Lincoln Family Birth Center at Eisenhower. Uh, it's very detailed and it's very exciting. So I'll wait until we have some photos that we can put up on the screen. Thank you anyway. All right, thank you. We'll go now to the uh, minutes of June 2nd, the special meeting for Wolfson Park study session and June 3, the regular meeting. I'll entertain a motion for both of those meetings. I'll make a motion to do it. Is there okay. a second? There's a motion and a second. Christy, if you would, please. Just one second, Mr. Mayor. See if there's any errors. Sorry, just bear with us one minute. All right, Christy, we have a motion and a second on the minutes. Would you please do the roll call vote? Council Member Hobart? Yes, I approve, whichever. Council Member Kite? Approved. Council Member Smartridge? Approved. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Approved. Mayor Weil? Yes, approved. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. We'll now to go to the consent calendar. Isaiah, would you handle that, please? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council, you have six items on your consent calendar for consideration. Item number one is to waive the full reading of all ordinances introduced or adopted pursuant to this agenda. Item number two is to adopt ordinance number 1184, second reading, approving the proposed statutory development agreement, DA21, dash zero 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 one by and between the city of Rancho Mirage and Innovative Automotive Holdings LLC Rancho Mirage Auto Plaza. Item number three is to adopt ordinance number one one eight five second reading amending section eight point one two point zero four zero agents contract with city conditions of chapter eight point one two garbage collection of Title VIII health and safety of the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code providing that providing the City Council greater flexibility in setting the term of a contract entered into pursuant to Chapter 8.12.40. Item number four is to a, approve a long-term renewable energy agreement between PowerX Corporation on behalf of the Rancho Mirage Energy Authority. Item number five, our contracts, and item number six, our demands. Uh, and before we go to council comments or questions, uh, if any member of the public wishes to speak <laughs> on one of these six items, now is the time to do so. If you are participating remotely, you would hit the raise <laughs> hand button on Zoom. If you're on your telephone, you would hit star nine. Christy, do we have any speaker cards for items one through six? No, we do not. Anyone here in person that didn't fill out a speaker card that would like to make a comment? Okay, we will go to our remote audience and Brad Anderson, go ahead. Hi, Brad Anderson. Uh, I currently live in the city of Ranch Mars. <clears throat> Sorry, 
Uh, I wanted to uh, speak uh, just briefly concerning, uh, concerning consent item number two. I'm kind of concerned that it's even on the consent calendar because it is kind of a big deal, uh, considering the city is going to give a portion, a large portion of the reserves away in in this type of development agreement uh, for this auto group against uh, you know backdrop of the, where the library is located off 111. And I, I uh, at the last uh, meeting I opposed this and I still do uh, just because I didn't bring it up last time because I totally forgot. But uh, there's been two instances when I came out of that library years ago where I could see the big horn sheep coming down the, the side of the mountain there. And and that's going to be, I can't imagine having an auto retail shop. And I know you have uh, limitations on light pollution and so forth or, or, or going to attempt to do that. But uh, having those automobiles in there and the noise that it produces and how it reflects up the mountain. And I would say that it's going to impact that aspect of ever seeing that again and so that's something to consider before you continue with this pro project as as uh, as laid out the last meeting and that's all i have thank you thank you for your comment seeing no one else that wishes to speak we'll close the public comment period and i will return this to the council mr mayor thank you isaiah uh so i have my hand raised in case you can see it uh, I was going to call, but Dana, why don't you go ahead? Now, I, um, I believe that the issue is too profound and um, substantial uh, that we should be discussing this item separately rather than uh, as a section uh, in the recitals uh, and uh, sequel compliance approval of development agreement there's just and plus the city attorney review uh, <clears throat> i have several issues that i want to talk about having to do with this item and uh, uh, it requires that uh, the proponent uh, be available for some questioning uh, and uh, that others may be available as well uh, I just think this is much too large a sum of money to be uh, given or loaned to or whatever the term may be uh, to the owners of the um, two automobile agencies that are uh, interested in this item. Uh, yeah, I have several questions. I anticipated uh, <clears throat> I would be able to go through these with somebody representing uh, the proponent. Uh, <clears throat> so, Mr. Mayor, I ask you, uh, <clears throat> will I be <clears throat> allowed to go through these questions uh, uh, with all of the council or uh, am I limited to just voting yes or no without any discussion of uh, really significant details? All right, Dana, you're basically requesting to pull item number two, is that correct? Yes, that would work fine. Okay, um, we'll deal with your questions in a moment. Okay. Is, there, is there any other council member that desires to pull any item other than number two? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion for approval of items one, three, four, five, and six. I'll make the motion to approve. I'll second the motion. All right, Christy, if you would uh, roll call, please. Council member Hobart? Aye, yes. Council member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smotrich? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, well, we're now dealing with uh, item number two, which uh, is the uh, adoption of the ordinance 1184. Um, um. I see our learned council is uh, participating here. 
Uh, is there any uh, uh, objection or concern um, regarding discussion of a consent item? Yeah, this is a consent item and it's basically the um, second reading of the ordinance. The ordinance was already um, introduced and passed during the first reading and it was noticed as a public hearing. We had a public hearing that was actually sent out um, and we conducted a public hearing. There was testimony, there was comment, there were questions, there was council deliberation. And so uh, basically when we're dealing with an ordinance upon its second reading, it's pretty much a ministerial act unless there's any significant change in the ordinance and I'm not aware of any significant changes that are being proposed. So if this were to be discussed, it would have to be re-noticed as a public hearing and we'd have to provide at least the um, 14 days notice. But right now we're just dealing with the second reading of an ordinance. Well, if I could respond to him, Mr. Chairman. Yes, why don't you go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. City Attorney, uh, this matter involves making a loan of something like six and a half million dollars uh, to um, a business uh, in the community. Uh, we've not discussed one word of it. You say that we've passed up opportunities to discuss it, but on the other hand, nobody told us that we were passing up opportunities. It is absolutely impossible for me to think that we can make a gift or a loan, actually probably, or whatever, uh, to uh, a business entity to do some business in our city. And nobody has the slightest idea of how much it's gonna cost us and what the uh, the rules are going to be with respect to paying us off, paying us back. Uh, and I don't, I think we can do two things. You say it takes, uh, let's go back to an agenda item. Uh, I think we could probably waive that. Uh, I don't want to, it's not my intent to slow it down, this project down, but it is my intent to make certain points about it. And if I had a chance to make certain points about it in the past, during the past few months, or whatever it is you're referring to, uh, nobody, including the city attorney, told us that this would cause us to uh, waive the right to discuss uh, us loaning 6.2 million, or I think it is 6.2 or 6.5 uh, million dollars uh, to a business out of our out of our treasury, and uh, I would I would say, in the interest of time, that uh, I would move to uh, allow this matter to be discussed. Uh, as though it were a regular item on the agenda. Okay, is yeah. there anyone else on the council that would like to make a comment? Yes, I would like to make a comment. Okay, go ahead, Iris. Uh, because I was going to bring this item forward because before the second vote, because this project consists of a 500 page staff report. And since the last council meeting, and that staff report, by the way, uh, I received, as probably did the other council members, six days before the council meeting. It, I feel that it was impossible to go through 500 pages and get all the full details on which we were going to be voting. Since the last council meeting, I have had an opportunity to go through it carefully. And I feel that certain things that were not mentioned at the last council meeting need to be mentioned and hopefully addressed. And perhaps this can become a perfect deal for all parties involved, because right now, as this deal is proposed, it may be a perfect deal for Mr. Jessup and it may be a perfect deal for the bank, 
But in my opinion, this deal is very far from perfect for the city of Rancho Mirage. At the last council meeting, I raised my concerns over the Infinity automobile brand and listed the many, many reasons for my concerns. I also questioned what the bank's loan commitment would be on the Volvo dealership. And I asked about the guarantee for Mr. Jessup's personal guarantee. And even though I asked for that information twice, I, it was never given to me. I still don't know anything about Mr. Jessup's personal guarantees, nor do I know if the other city council members have knowledge of Mr. Jessup's personal guarantees. I don't know what his assets are, and I don't know what his liabilities might be. So before uh, we go on to a second vote on this, I feel that we should um, have all the city council members involved in whatever decision making is going to be done regarding over a $6 million loan. And I think that this is something where we can all give our input because this is a major investment and because I have found many flaws with the Infinity dealership and the placement on that property of the Infinity dealership. So I would be voting no if this was going to be uh, voted on as a second reading, but I would like to um, have a study session done. And I, if I can go on a little bit, the staff report on page 112 indicates that part of the guarantee of Mr. Jessup will be $500,000 in a liquid form. But that $500,000 was the only specified guarantee in the staff report. And that $500,000 is not specified to be in a designated account strictly reserved for the purposes of a guarantee. There were no other fixed assets identified in the staff report for purposes of the guarantee and other dealerships owned by Mr. Jessup are probably all LLCs and therefore not available as additional security. We were assured at our last council meeting that Mr. Jessup's personal guarantee exceeded the 6.27 million that the city would be loaning for the Infinity dealership. But there is no specific, no periodic verification provided of Mr. Jessup's personal guarantee. Verifications which would ensure that his personal guaranteeing assets would always be available for the term of the loan. Additionally, according to Mr. Jessup, the bank at which Mr. Jessup has been doing business for over 20 years has apparently indicated that perhaps they will be making a, an $8 million loan for the Volvo dealership. But that loan is still under review and is conditioned on the city's $6.27 million loan. And to my knowledge, the bank loan still has not been confirmed. Mr. Jessup also indicated that he has no specific financial contribution in mind for his participation in either the Infinity or the Volvo dealership. Mr. Jessup estimates the total cost of the proposed project to be not more than $15 million. Sales tax from this dealership will generate a sizable revenue to the city, but I later learned, and as a surprise to me, according to an outside survey company, the difference between the two dealerships earnings 
would only be about $15,000 per year. The bank, if they make a loan of $8 million for the Volvo dealership, will be receiving as collateral four times the amount of building square footage located on the Volvo land than the Infinity dealership, which means that for $1.73 million, greater than the city's loan of $6.27 million, the bank would be receiving a 24,000 square foot building project, while the city of Rancho Mirage will be receiving a 5,800 square foot building project. That's 5,800 square feet compared to 24,000 square feet. The Volvo dealership will also have a much larger lot size and will have a far greater usable land area. The Infinity dealership will have no further usable land due to the large mountain directly behind the Infinity dealership. The bank is loaning on a Volvo brand dealership, which has not only a dealership, but also has a service and repair center on the property. There will be no service and repair center on the Infinity property, which means that the Infinity dealership or any future dealerships on that property will be totally dependent upon the service center located on the Volvo dealership property. And just to make this a bit more clear, I would like to show you a couple of, of uh, maps that I found extremely interesting. And as you can see, the blue over here is the third dealership that might come in. This is the Volvo dealership. This is, this is the Volvo dealership. This is the uh, repair center. And this is the Infinity dealership. All this in orange back here is all mountain and the rest of the mountain range. And to keep it in a little bit better perspective, when I talk about a huge mountain behind the in Infinity dealership, this is what we are looking at. As you can see, this is the Infinity dealership and this is the enormous mountain right behind it. So there is no future expansion of a service center possible. As we all know, high-end dealerships require their own design elements. So if the Infinity property was ever taken back by the city, substantial remodeling for a new high-end dealer would be needed. And that dealership would still have no service center unless they could build one on their infinity lot, which would be impossible. We all know that we take risks every day of our lives. Otherwise, we would never get into a car and we would never board an airplane. However, when there are known risks, many of which I stated at the last meeting, we cannot just ignore them. So when a corporation like Reuters says that an insider at the Infinity Corporation describes the Infinity Company's situation as dire and that it is a do or die affair, I find it beyond concerning. And when I read on reputable websites that the Nissan Infinity Company had profits dropping by $495 million, and when it is hinted that it will be very difficult for both auto giants to survive the storm, I truly believe we need to take it seriously and proceed as cautiously as possible. Mr. Jessup said that manufacturers go through cyclical times 
and restructuring, and that Volvo reinvented itself after being given to a Chinese company 10 years ago by the Ford Motor Company when Volvo was on its deathbed. He even stated that Porsche was, went through its own struggles. But unlike Ford and Porsche corporations, Rancho Mirage is not a multi-billion dollar business. And we are accountable to our citizens for the decisions and the investments we make. Times change. Once munch and demand brands like Oldsmobile, Pontiac, DeLorean, and even the VW Bug frequently get discarded and are replaced with newer brands. Department stores become passe. And now even Steinmart in our own Rancho Mirage has gone out of business. According to the Desert Sun article, one of my colleagues is quoted as saying, the city's loan won't go through until Jessup has secured the funds needed for the rest of the project. And yet, some of members of our council seem very anxious to approve this deal. And before we know what the bank's commitment will be or whether Mr. Jessup will contribute any of his own funds. At our last meeting, Dana made his comments and then posed the question, why would we risk what other professional lenders have rejected? Needless to say, Rancho Mirage is not here to make risky loans. And yes, several years ago, we did make a loan to the Ritz-Carlton, a five-star resort. Any risk with that loan was eliminated because the loan was secured by five deluxe condominiums located at the Ritz-Carlton Resort. A resort that was built in 1988, was well established, and was not on a, a project on the drawing board. I only have one vote, but I would pose the question, if both the Volvo and Infinity deals are such great deal, deals, instead of lending $6.27 million on the Infinity dealership, why isn't Rancho Mirage lending the $8 million on the Volvo dealership, which includes the service and repair center? So that if times do get tough and dealerships come and go, the city of Rancho Mirage could at least assure any new dealerships that they would never need to worry about a service center accommodating their customers. Fortunately, there are other options available. Options that could make this a perfect deal for Rancho Mirage and for Mr. Jessup and for the bank. But as this project is proposed, I cannot vote in favor of it. I still look forward to Mr. Jessup and his family joining our business community. I have great respect for him and I know he's a fine gentleman. But I also hope the council will postpone their approval of this item, meet at a study session, and make an equitable and perfect deal for all parties involved. And I am still hopeful that Mr. Jessup will specify his investment contribution to the Infinity dealership. As I mentioned at the last meeting, God forbid something should happen to Mr. Jessup. Because we all know that bad things do happen to good people. I think Mr. Jessup should provide an insurance policy to ensure payments of the loan to the city and to ensure that the city of Rancho Mirage will not suddenly be in the car business. And since the council members of Rancho Mirage are expected to trust Mr. Jessup with a loan of over $6 million, I find it very troubling and extremely strange that Mr. Jessup is not willing to trust 
the Rancho Mirage Council members sufficiently to reveal assets and perhaps debts of his personal guarantee. So in closing, I would say in my 60 years of doing business, I have never seen any business deal quite so perplexing or quite so worrisome. There is also another issue that Mr. Jessup apparently did not plan for, and that is earthquake insurance. And let me just mention real briefly that he has not proposed any earthquake insurance on the infinity building, which I can understand because Mr. Jessup will be leveraged on the property. However, if a structural damage to the building from an earthquake could occur and should occur, the demolition cost could possibly be one to $2 million. And although it states on page 137 that the owner would be responsible for repairs, demolition and making sure the land is safe and clean, the city would be left with a vacant piece of land, perhaps the, and, and perhaps the balance of an unpaid loan. And depending on Mr. Jessup's ability to pay for demolition after a disaster, which may also have adverse effects on his other properties or assets, the city may be left with having to demolish the building at its own expense. So yes, I would love to see this item tabled for a full discussion at a study session with the entire Rancho Mirage City Council, with our attorney, with our city manager. And I think that we can make this a perfect deal for all involved. But the way it is now, it is a far from perfect deal for the city of Rancho Mirage. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, Iris. Uh, Dana, you started to speak. You're on. You're on mute at the moment. Keep getting on. Okay. Okay. Go, I'm off. go ahead. Make your comments, Dana, yeah. and then we'll go to some other people on the council. Okay. If if that is a motion to uh, continue the matter to a meeting of the council uh, and uh, with the uh, parties that are necessary. Uh, I would second that. And uh, I would like to say that the issues that uh, have just been brought up uh, by ours uh, are some of the issues that I have here in my paper, and I cut it down significantly because of time considerations. Uh, this matter, uh, we have a fiduciary duty to be circumspect with respect to how we spend public funds and to spend 6200 or $6,200,000 in this situation with the complete absence of significant data to the point that we really don't have the slightest idea what we're doing, uh, even though some of us may think we do, one or two may actually, but for the most part, we have no idea. And uh, this matter, I hate to say it, but I think that this matter is something that the public deserves a much closer uh, review of. And uh, I would second the motion uh, to hold an independent uh, meeting, uh, set closed session, or even if it can't be closed session, uh, open session, uh, that we that we have the meeting that I was has talked about before we have any further uh, discussion of uh, of this matter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for allowing me to finish my comments. All right, Dan. Uh, uh, Mr. Um, Mayor. Yes. 
Um, so if, if the council's inclined to bring this back for discussion, my recommendation is that we bring it back on a date certain. And we also, we list it not only as a discussion item, but we also keep it on the consent calendar in the event that um, we don't make any changes, make, we don't make any substantive changes. That way we won't be required to go back and have to re-notice and bring it through the uh, process one more how time. Can we, how, can, but they, how, can we make, how can we make substantive changes in something other than a full council meeting? No, it's, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that you include it on the next agenda, on an agenda as a discussion item. But you can also have the item appear on a consent calendar that can follow that. Well, it seems that Iris's motion makes the most sense to me because it gives us the greatest latitude in looking into the details of which we know nothing. Can, and, and you'll, that's, and, that's why and you'll have, Steve, we should, you'll have the oppor Steve, you'll have the opportunity to do Steve. that. Steve. Can I just make a quick comment to maybe gain some clarity? Um, you know, we keep on hearing the term in the complete absence of any information. Uh, the city council had its public hearing on this item and it was fully vetted with a 500 page staff report, which the council has already approved this project. We're not talking about the project. We're talking about the second reading of an ordinance. So it, this item appeared in front of the planning commission on May 13th. The staff report between the planning commission and the city council was essentially the same. It's the same information. So the information has been publicly available since the May 13th planning commission meeting. So we know that when you get these reports, it was 500 pages. There's a lot of information in there. So the, part of the issue that we're running into is the city council already approved this project and we're talking as if we have it. The, what you're considering is the second reading of an ordinance for the development agreement for an approved project. So it's getting a little confusing on we had our public hearing where all this information was discussed with the city council with planning commission and now it's being discussed as if we're considering the project this is just second reading which is why it's on consent it's standard procedure for our ordinances upon second reading to go on the consent calendar this is not a standard this is not a standard meeting and if you if you want to be technical about about this and say we've already voted on it, why do we have council meetings? We haven't already voted on it. Uh, we have not completed the voting process. And it would seem to me that it's obvious to anybody that there are giant questions that have to be answered. The matter has not been approved. And if somebody wants to say it has, then I would move that we table the matter. All right, Dana, if we may, I think you've had an opportunity to express your position as Iris. I'd like to ask Richard and Charlie if they have anything to say. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would have to go along with the recent comments made by our city manager. This certainly has been discussed at the last council meeting. I'm sure Iris brought her documents together and we spent quite an hour or two or more reviewing all the same documents that I heard today back at the previous meeting. I'm not quite sure if we go ahead and vote this back, whether in fact we're doing a legal, uh, legal issue here. It seems to me, as the city manager has said, this deal is done. And I don't think at this point we can reverse our position We've all had an opportunity to review the details of this project. And I believe the final decision has already been made. And what we're getting on now are some of the details. All right, thank you, Richard. Uh, Charlie, do you have any comment at this point? Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in, in listing everything that's going on, um, I gave my opinion on this 
subject at the last council meeting where it was passed, as, as Richard has just said. However, we on this council have the opportunity to share our individual opinions in a businesslike and respectful manner, sharing our thoughts for the best decisions for Ranch Horizon now and in the future. I respect that options of different thoughts on all subjects that come before us should be heard. However, I am hearing a lot of what ifs, what about, could be, and as I said in my initial presentation on this at the last council meeting, when I go to bed, I hope that I wake up in the morning. So there's a lot of what ifs out there. Listening to all this, a lot of the what ifs have been answered in those 500 pages. And I refer to 16 pages alone that back up the Jessup's finding operation in this project by giving um, their commitment, their money. So this project has been on the drawing board also for a few years. This didn't come up yesterday at all. It has been gone through the system for a couple of years on the drawing board, in which time many meetings and subcommittee and banks, legal terms, Jessup family, who has been in business in this valley for over 38 successful years and history behind them. This project is still in my mind and my concerns have been only vetted by those meetings and personal backing of the Jessup family. And again, I refer to the 16 pages that reference this in the 500 pages that was talked about. I am sure that with the ifs, ands, earthquakes, fires, um, disaster, uh, being bombed, outer space people coming, and I'm, I'm not making light of this. Yes, there are issues. However, I think through all of this, the major issues and the support have been there for this project. And I assure you that the next two years, when these are built and they are in full operations, that the success of these additions to the Rancho Mirage Auto Road will be a point of pride and continued revenue to our city. And I just don't think <clears throat> that if all this worldly knowledge is out there on the internet, about Infinity and the Nissan Corporation that anybody would have anything to do with them, period, not even giving them a gas pump. So I take umbrage with the fact that all this dire, dire concern is out there, which I have not seen in two years or the subcommittees or everything that we have been through staff, through attorneys, uh, and what Richard said, um, that uh, we are so dumb and stupid that a few of us on this council didn't catch any of this a massive amount of negativeness that was in this report. Thank you. All right. Um, I think everybody's had an opportunity to express their opinion at this point. Uh, I will ask, uh, we are on the consent calendar. I'll ask for a motion to approve item two on the consent calendar. Ted, before we, Ted, before we we go that far, if I can just ask, maybe well, the we, other council, maybe the other council members, if any of them have actually looked at Mr. Jessup's finances and assets and li possible liabilities that are part of his guarantee, because I asked for that guarantee and to look at it twice, and. Apparently, it is not for me to look at. I don't know if other council members or people on the uh, subcommittee had a chance to look at it. Yeah, I've been in the financial world for a while, and I, I, I find it very strange um, not to be able to take a look at somebody's guarantee for this amount of money. Okay, thank you. 
again, I uh, we're back to item two. I'll ask for a motion. Well, no, you didn't. Nobody answered my question. Well, Has anyone think... on the council taken a look at Mr. Jessup's financials as far as his assets and liabilities? Have you, Ted? I don't think this is the time and place for that, by the way. I think that 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 well, was. Well, I can't think of any better time or place for that. that I mean, was... I'm only asking a simple question. The five of us are deciding whether or not we're going to make a loan of over $6 million. Has anyone else on the council seen Mr. Jessup's finances? Because I know that you said last week at the, or two weeks ago at the council meeting, Ted, that uh, there's something more important than dollars and that is reputation. And I would agree that reputations are very important but it does not pay the bills. You cannot take your reputation to the bank and expect to have your bills paid. So I don't, has Richard seen the financials? Has Charlie seen the financials? Have you? Well, let, let me answer that on my part, if I may, Mr. Mayor and Iris. In the uh, presentation that was given, I did ask that question. And it was also given that do we have the financials and the history if the bank is going to loan them X amount of millions on Volvo? Evidently, the bank who has been part of this family's financial background for many, many, many years has the financial history of the Jessup family, and they have approved it moving forward, which they would not have moved forward if their financial statement to the bank who are not dumb and would not give money out if they did not have that financial. So yes, it was answered to me is yes, it was given to them. Have I personally seen it? No. Okay, and I know I had asked Mr. Jessup if the bank had approved the $8 million and he said it is still under review. And so I also said at that point, I was, that if it is not approved by the bank, our loan would not go through and the dealership as on the record would not be built. So right. that was our security with that. We would follow the bank's approval on the Volvo and us on the rest of the infinity. And as far as the auto service center in the proposal is also stated that it is also shared with infinity. It's not just Volvo. They couldn't build Volvo, a service center, and tell Infinity, go find your, your repairs down the block. It's a joint venture of both dealerships in the service center. I agree. And I saw that stated in the Thank staff you. report. Thank However, you. if Infinity, for some reason, is no longer there, is, is there a guarantee anywhere written that any new dealership that comes into the Infinity property will also have access to that service station and service center. Again, so, it is all what ifs. And no, I there's not. It isn't sense. what if. It is it something is, that you what make if. a deal. When you no, make a it, deal, it, you, it's what you, ifs. It's when you make a deal, that's right. And all those what ifs are what makes deals or breaks deals. And that's why contracts are very, very important, not for when times are good, but when there are problems and you have to go back and look at the contract and make sure every single thing was covered. And that's why all those what ifs, anytime you have a business deal, need to be covered. But we don't have to continue this conversation. Uh, there's, I raised my concerns. I made my record. You all know my feelings. I ask all those what ifs because what ifs are the things that come back to haunt us when things sour. So thank you and all thanks right. for your answer. Thank you, Iris. Again, uh, do I hear a motion to, on the consent calendar, to approve item number two? I'll make the motion to approve 
consent calendar mm -hmm. item number three. Richard, did you second that? I'll second the motion. Okay. Uh, Christy, uh, roll call, please. Council Member Hobart? No. Council Member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smotrich? No. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 3 2 with Council Member Hobart and Council Member Smotrich voting opposed. Thank you. The next item will be a uh, report by Bill Reeson for the Palm Springs International Airport Commission. Bill, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, City Council members, Mr. Hagerman and his staff, and any uh, Rancho Mirage residents that are uh, listening. Uh, as you know, my uh, term as your representative on the Palm Springs Airport Commission expires at the end of this month. So this will be my uh, final update report to you. First of all, the number of airline passengers uh, coming through the airport has uh, increased quite rapidly here the last, uh, the last few months. We are now over about 75% of what we were the beginning of last year, which was like 10% or so. So uh, we've come a long way. The, uh, in 19, or uh, nine, uh, excuse me, in 2019, we had a record uh, passenger count of a uh, little over two and a half million passengers. As of now, half, uh, not quite half uh, through the year, we're at almost one million. So by the end of the year, we will probably reach close to two million passengers. So we're getting close to the record we had in in uh, 2019, it's good news. Uh, and I think this trend will continue to increase with the announcement uh, by Southwest Airlines uh, adding four new destinations from Palm Springs. will be <clears throat> starting in the October, November time, time period. They'll have a daily flight to Sacramento year-round, uh, seasonal flights to Dallas, Chicago, and Portland. Also, Alaska Airlines has announced they will add a flight to Austin, Texas. And Delta uh, will increase their number of flights to Salt Lake City from two to three. So I think my last report here a few months ago was saying that the airlines were, were cutting back uh, here the last few months. You see what's happening, it's, uh, it's growing. Good news for the airport and, and, the, uh, and, the, and the community. Uh, I know we receive a lot of noise complaints from residents and uh, and uh, over the, the years I've been uh, your representative, I've responded to quite a few of them, and I feel I've, uh, I've been successful in, in dealing with their, with their issues. The, uh, the airport now has, on their, on their website, they have a, a noise complaint uh, link or whatever. So, and uh, I understand that, well, that there's been a, been changing it, and now it has, uh, it's been easier to, uh, to access. So I would suggest that when, when any of uh, you get a noise complaint, uh, have the, the person contact the airport's website and, and, and talk to their noise experts and that usually will resolve uh, some of their concerns. Uh, going on, some of the projects at the airport uh, 
uh, we, I've been, we've been talking about for the last year or two, but uh, the biggest one, uh, the ticketing wing expansion, uh, which uh, has enlarged that ticketing wing lobby significantly. Uh, the, the north wing, the upper level is complete. The south side uh, is uh, still being com uh, constructed or updated and will, uh, will be completed within the next few months, by the end of the year for sure. The new jetway boarding bridges, uh, they are being replaced right now. The old ones have uh, been there for many, many, many years, and it was uh, decided uh, it would be more or better uh, cost effective to replace them rather than try to repair these old ones. Another project uh, which is quite visible to the, uh, to the passengers is the, uh, in the Bono concourse up by the, uh, the, the gates uh, in the center, the, you remember there's four tall, tall palm trees and they've grown so much that they're pushing up against the, the glass ceiling and starting to do some damage. So those have been removed uh, and they're gonna be replaced with, uh, with some smaller trees. So uh, anyway, that's uh, what's going on at the airport. And as I said earlier, my term is expiring uh, at the end of this month after serving you as, as your representative for, for the last six years. Uh, I've enjoyed serving on the commission and uh, keeping you informed of uh, what's going on at the airport. And I will miss that, I, I certainly will. I, I, I really enjoyed uh, the uh, commission meetings and what's going on at the airport. So with that, uh, if, uh, if, if any of you or my successor would like any information or in assistance uh, concerning the airport, please be feel, to, feel free to contact me. Again, thank you for allowing me to represent you on the US Palm Springs Airport International, Palm Springs International Airport Commission. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for your service. You've been a wonderful representative over the last six years, and we appreciate your dedication. Thank you, Deb. Bill, we should make that a lifetime appointment, I say. <laughs> I'm sure Bill can sure. handle the airport reporting. I'm sorry, as well I'm as sorry uh, Richard, what did you say? <laughs> okay. Say it again, Richard. Hey, Bill, come back, come back, come back. Yeah. Richard, say it again to him. Say it again. Say lifetime it again. Appointment. There lifetime you go. Appointment, there you so. go. Lifetime? Yeah. lifetime? That'd be fine with me, but <laughs> they won't let me. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Thank you again, Bill. The uh, next item will be number eight on our agenda. And uh, it's the, uh, the continuation regarding the landscape and lighting uh, mm -hmm. maintenance assessment. Uh, that'll be handled by Calvair Pascal. Calvair. All right, thank you. Uh, Mayor and City Council, uh, in 1987, the city formed its first lighting and landscape district. In 1995-96, the city consolidated the multiple districts into a landscape and lighting district, 87-01, which currently has five special benefit zones and one citywide median zone. The district maintains landscape and lighting in each specific zone. The zones within the district are assessed on a cost recovery basis assessing partial owners for the associated maintenance costs of their specific zone. The citywide landscape and lighting zones, which covers the city medians, is assessed to the parcel owners citywide. The five special benefit zones within the district are assessed only to the parcels receiving the direct and special benefit as determined by the original agreement between the developer and the city. To determine whether assessments need to be revised, the city contracts with Will Dan Financial Services to prepare an engineer's annual levy report. The engineer's annual levy report factors the revenue and expenses 
associated with each zone and provides a cough recovery estimate for each zone. The engineer's report is recommending the following. The citywide median zone remained unchanged at $26.42. Zone A increased from $268.40 to $276.44. Zone B will remain unchanged at $421. Zone C will remain unchanged at $58.19. Zone D increased from $252.78 to $258.12. Zone F increased from $416.66 to $424.28. Again, the recommendations in the engineer report are based on cost recovery and constitute minor adjustments. As required, a public hearing notice has been posted in the local newspaper noticing today's meeting. Staff recommends that the City Council open up the public hearing, invite testimony, and consider any rating protest regarding the Consolidated Landscape and Lighting District 87-01. Staff recommends that the City Council adopt both resolutions attached to the staff report and direct the City Clerk to file certified copies of the resolutions with the appropriate agency. This concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Calvert. Let's go ahead and open up the public hearing on, the, on this item. If any member of the public would like to speak, now's the time to do so. If you are participating remotely, you would hit the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone to participate in the public hearing. Before we go to our remote audience, do we have any speaker cards? No, we do not. Okay, anyone here in person that uh, didn't fill out a speaker card that would like to make a comment? Okay, we will go to our remote audience. And we don't have anyone wishing to speak on this item, Mr. Mayor, so I'll turn this over to you. Thank you, Isaiah. Is there anybody on the council that would like to make a comment on this item? Oh, well, thank you. All right, seeing none, I'll call for a motion, please. I will make a motion then that the city council A adopt resolution number 2021 next in order approving the final engineering's annual levy report for the Consolidation Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance Assessment District number 87-014, fiscal year 2021-22, and B, adopt resolution number 2021 next in order, ordering the levy and collection of annual assessments for the Consolidating Landscaping and Lighting Maintenance Assessment District number 87-014, Zero 01 for fiscal years 2021 22 and C. Direct the city clerk to file with the appropriate agencies certified copies of the above resolutions as may be required together with accompanying exhibits, attachments, and reports. And is there a second? I'll, I'll second it then. There's a motion and a second. Christy, if you would, please. Council Member Hobart? Yes. Council Member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smotrich? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. The next item is number nine, and it's the development agreement amendment case number DA 21 0003. And that is being presented by Jeremy Gleim, our Development Services Director. Jeremy? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Members of the Council, uh, give me just a minute while the uh, slide presentation loads. Um, this is a request to amend the existing development agreement associated with tentative track map, case number 36620, uh, simply to extend the approval of that project. As the council may recall, the project was originally approved in 2014 and is located just north of the Versailles neighborhood in section 30. The project encompasses just under 34 acres of vacant land as shown on the screen here and consists of an 82 lot residential subdivision. And although the council approved the tentative map back in 2014, the development agreement associated with the project was just approved last year. 
The current request is for an additional extension, which would keep the project alive for six more months uh, with provisions that would allow the project to stay alive after the six month time frame if certain performance standards are met. Um, unfortunately, the applicant was plagued by some circumstances that were out of the control um, upon the initial approval of the project, including major Coachella Valley Water District infrastructure upgrades, uh, which ultimately prevented the development of the project. And those upgrades were not completed by the district until 2018. And then, of course, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic also played into um, the lack of development of the project. Uh, I'd also like to note that over the past two to three months, staff has received many numerous inquiries and interest in the project, which is great news, uh, including conversations with national home builders. So um, again, just to summarize what you are considering today is simply a six month extension uh, of the approval or the life of this project. And based upon that, the Planning Commission has recommended that the City Council approve this First Amendment to the Development Agreement. And that concludes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Let's go ahead and open up the public hearing on this item. If any member of the public would like to speak on this item, now is the time to do so. If you are on Zoom, you would hit the raise hand button. If you're on your telephone, you would hit star nine. Christy, do we have any speaker cards? We do not. Anyone here in person that didn't fill out a speaker card that wishes to speak on this item? No? Okay. We will go to our remote audience. We'll just give it a minute here. All right, Mr. Mayor, uh, not seeing anyone that wishes to speak on this item, so I'll turn this back over to you and the council. All right. Thank you, Isaiah. Is there anybody on the council that would like to make a comment? Yes, Charlie. Yes, I'd like to say it's a great, great project. Looking forward to it. But I have one question. Is how many extensions, Jared, can we give to any project? Any project? Is, is there a limit or how does it roll out? I think people would love to know how it works. Yeah, so, so typically with a tentative map, um, it's a five-year life cycle, um, which is why um, we entered into a development agreement with the applicant last year and um, based on the terms of the development agreement, um, the council extended it for an additional year. So um, there's no limit as far as extensions go if a development agreement is included. Um, but of course, we don't want to just keep these things going forever and ever, which is why uh, we're just proposing a six month extension at this point. Very good, and I know that they are having an awful time builders getting lumber, equipment, and including me waiting six months to replace my oven, which I find <laughs> impossible. Plus, I had to pay for it up front. Thank you, Jeremy. Jeremy, I have a question. Sure. On your presentation, you said that there would be one extension and then there could be another extension given the circumstances at that time. What kind of circumstances are we talking about? Yeah, so for an example, if the developer submits a preliminary development plan, which is essentially the plan for the future houses or the architecture of the project within that first six month time frame, then we would automatically extend that uh, map for an additional year to give staff time to process that request through the public hearing process and everything else. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion. Certainly the timing is right for this project uh, that the city council approve and introduce ordinance number next in order, first reading adopting the first amendment to development agreement DA 190002 pursuant to case number DA 21-0003 and chapter 17.56 of the Rancho Mirage Municipal Code. I'll second that. There's a motion and a second. Christy, if you would, please. Council Member Hobart? Yes. Council Member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smotrich? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. 
The next item will be the Coachella Valley Association of Governments membership for 29 Palms Band of Mission Indians. Uh, that's being handled by Jessica Pulliam. Jessica, Jessica, if you would, please. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. The item I will be discussing today is the proposed addendum number two to the third amendment and restatement of the Coachella Valley Association of Governments, known as CVAG, Joint Powers Agreement, which would establish the 29 Palms Band of Mission Indians as a formal member. This item was originally presented to the council on May 20th of this year. At this time, additional questions were asked and it was requested by council to have the city attorney look into the matter prior to this item going to council vote. Before you today is a supplemental staff report which summarizes the findings of the city's attorney office. I will provide a brief recap of the initial item and then summarize the city attorney's additional findings. CVAG was formed in November of 1973 with the approval of the first Joint Powers Agreement, JPA. In 1989, after voters passed Measure A, CVAG amended and restated the JPA to specify its role as the Regional Transportation Authority. The City of Rancho Mirage is considered an original member. Since then, the JPA has been amended several times to include the following. In 1998, to include the City of Blythe as a member. In 2018, the Executive Committee approved the Third Amendment to the Joint Powers Authority which better reflected CVAG's mission and organizational structure and included the Agua Caliente Band of Cahuilla Indians and the Cabazon Band of Mission Indians as members. And most recently in 2019, the Torres Martinez Desert Cahuilla Indians rejoined CVAG through an addendum approved by each CVAG jurisdiction. CVAG was approached earlier this year by the chairman of the 29 Palm Band of Mission Indians and the tribe is requesting to join CVAG. The supplemental staff report provides relevant background information regarding the addendum number two and the voting rights of executive committee members. Subsection 2.4.2 of section 2.4 governing body of the third restatement of the joint powers agreement dated April 30th, 2018. The JPA agreement provides in relevant part that members of, of the executive committee shall include tribal chair from each Indian tribe um, while allowing council, uh, the tribal council to appoint a current council member in place of the tribal chair. Further in section 2.7, power and limitations thereon, provides in relevant part that all powers and authorities of the agency shall be exercised by the General Assembly and its executive committee, and unless otherwise provided, each member is entitled to one vote. In essence, nothing in the JPA agreement expects expressly limits any general assembly or its executive committee members voting rights. That concludes my presentation. And if there are any questions or concerns, I'd be happy to answer those now. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the public comment period on this item. Uh, if any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, now is the time to do so. You would hit the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Christy, do we have any speaker cards? No, we do not. Okay, anyone here in person that didn't fill out a speaker card that wishes to speak on this item? Okay. We will give our remote audience just one minute here in case they're a little slow on the button. All right, Mr. Mayor, no one is wishing to speak on this item, so I'll turn this back over to you and the council. All right, thank you. Is there anybody on the council that would have liked to address this issue. I would just like to ask uh, our city manager uh, if he um, uh, approves uh, an affirmative vote on this matter. Because if he does, then I'm going to support it. Uh, yeah, so this would definitely be consistent with adding the other two tribes into CVAG. I think, uh, you know, they are uh, sovereign governments. And uh, as we have a great government to government relationship uh, with our local tribe, uh, I think it makes uh, complete sense to have them represented within a regional body like CVAG. So yes, uh, staff does uh, support this item. Thank you. Uh, yes. Any, any other comments? Uh, 
And I can say that I believe most of the other cities uh, have approved the uh, 29 uh, Palms Band uh, uh, for admission to CVAC. Uh, may I hear a motion, please? Well, I'll make the motion then that the City Council approve addendum number two to the third amendment and restatement of the CVEG Joint Powers Agreement, which establishes the 29 Palms Band of Mission Indians as a formal member. Second. There's a motion and a second. Christy, please. Council Member Hobart? Yes. Council Member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smotrich? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Very good. The, uh, the next item is the, uh, the Coachella Valley Economic Partnership, uh, acronym CBEP, uh, request for funding, and that's being handled by Gabe Cotting, our Director of Marketing. Gabe, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, esteemed council. We're here today uh, at the request of uh, city, city and staff received a letter from CVEP requesting their annual funding. So just for a little context here, the Coachella Valley Economic Partnership established in 1994 uh, with their stated mission is to incite vision-driven transformation in the greater Palm Springs region. Uh, on June 3rd, CVEP CEO Joe Wallace sent the letter, uh, sent the attached letter to the city of Rancho Mirage requesting uh, funding that we consider financial support for CVEP in fiscal year 21 22. Uh, in the recent history, Rancho Mirage has supported CVEP at the $10,000 level. However, in fiscal year 2021, uh, because of the significant impact of revenues, uh, the city of Rancho Mirage did not support CVEP. And then, for additional context, uh, you can see the levels in which. Um, in which the other cities, uh, the other desert cities are currently supporting. So not counting Rancho Mirage, there's six uh, desert cities that are currently contributing to CVEP as an organization. Uh, so their letter, their letter is attached um, that explains a little bit more context and what they're doing. And then we're asking today that the city council review CVEP's request and then take any action they deem necessary. Thank you, Gabe. We'll go ahead and open up the public comment period on this item. If any member of the public wishes to speak, now's the time to do so. You would hit the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Christy, do we have any speaker cards? No, we do not. Anyone here in person that didn't fill out a speaker card that wishes to speak? <clears throat> Is Joe Wallace here? Uh, let, let me look at our remote audience. I don't see uh, Mr. Wallace on the uh, remote audience. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, so I don't see anyone in our remote audience that wishes to speak on this item. Uh, so we'll close the public comment period and I'll turn this over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Isaiah. Richard, would you like to make a comment about CVAP at all? No, I was the representative from the city prior to your being represented, Ted. And I think uh, there are certainly some cities in the valley that have benefited from CVAP and their program. I was just interested in finding out whether CVAP, as it's currently structured, that does anything for us, the city, Rancho Mirage, or do they have just a general uh, pot full of money that comes together and then they spend it. So I guess the question is, do they have specific programs which they would like us to support? Okay. And it's, yes, Dana. I um, echo uh, Richard's comments. Uh, I don't know how many years uh, we have been contributing to CVEP. Uh, and each year we get a lunch. Uh, but I've never seen anything from a job production perspective come out of CVEP. And that's what they were all intended to be, was initially to uh, be job productive and do some social issues. Um, 
I don't, you know, I don't feel comfortable voting no uh, because it makes us look cheap uh, when everybody else is supporting it, uh, or most everybody. Uh, on the other hand, being frugal with taxpayer money, uh, you, I'd find it virtually impossible to justify it. But all that aside, uh, I'll give you a chance to uh, move move up the ladder. I would I would suggest we offer five thousand dollars to them as a gift from our city once again, uh, and still looking to find uh, job placements in our city from them. Any other comments on the council? No other comments. It, it, uh, also, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, if uh, more information is desired, uh, we could uh, continue this item if the council desires to, and we could uh, organize a presentation from CVEP for the council if you wanted to do that as well. Just yeah, throwing I that out gonna, there as an I alternative. I was going to suggest, as Richard had, had uh, requested, I, I thought possibly Joe Wallace would be here today uh, to, to lay out what their program was going to be. So I would uh, I would make a recommendation to uh, continue this item uh, for another for another date. I'll second the motion. Okay. What's the date? You got to set the date that you're from a parliamentary perspective. I don't think we have to set the. Or you can table date. it. Or you can table it and produce no date. And that's what we're doing. Yeah, we, we can we can table it and then bring it back once we uh, coordinate schedules and a presentation. And we'll second the motion to the table. Okay. Uh, a motion and a second. Christy, please. Council Member Hobart? Yes. Council Member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smotrich? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, thank you. The next is the uh, very exciting consideration for approval of a concept design for the Wolf Wolfson Park expansion. And that's being handled by Ryan Stendell, the Public Works Director. If you would, Ryan. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council Members. I bear with me while my presentation comes up. <laughs> I'm pleased to You're be here. You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Okay, here we go. Um, for the benefit of those who have not seen this full presentation, I'm going to go through it uh, fairly quickly and then intend to follow up on some of the items that were left outstanding in the study session that we had just about two weeks ago. So Wolfson Park, uh, existing Wolfson Park located on Frank Sinatra Drive, approximately a Duval intersection. Um, with an approximate one acre parcel uh, to the east. The city was fortunate enough to purchase this property in calendar year 2020, and the existing condition of the site was a very dilapidated uh, residential home that needed to be cleared. Since that time, this, the site has been scraped and secured and looks very similar to the photo I've got up on the screen. The concept design for Wolfson Park includes um, three main focus areas. Uh, first, a parking area that's accessed off of eastbound Frank Sinatra via a deceleration or, or turn pocket that accesses 20 parking spaces. Uh, additionally, there is sidewalk connectivity to the east um, to existing sidewalk networks. And lastly, an enhanced one additional connection to the very popular but Butler Abrams Trail. Uh, additionally, staff has done everything we can to keep the active areas of the park closer to Frank Sinatra and added uh, buffered landscaping uh, to be respectful to our neighbors at the Ranch Mirage Racquet Club. A couple of project renderings that David Vols Design, our consultant on this, has prepared. Uh, and as I stated at the study session, you will see a piece of public art that is just a placeholder just showing the city council where art could go in the future. That is not an art piece being proposed with this project. And 
Okay, so we've had a quite extensive amount of public input on this project, culminating with a study session that we hosted on June 2nd. And there were uh, several areas of follow-up that I'd like to spend a couple of moments on. Uh, we talked a little bit about site furnishings, what's out there existing. Uh, and after we did a field study, we had in the existing Wolfson Park, uh, five, five tables, eight benches. In the proposed new area, we're looking at uh, adding two tables, four benches, and bike racks to accommodate six bikes. And these are examples of products that would be used if approved. The suggestion was made to add two additional handicapped parking spaces, and that has been accommodated. We talked a lot about how popular this park is for uh, animals, and we're looking to double the capacity, adding one new water fountain with canine bowl and uh, two additional waste bag dispensers, similar to those shown on the screen. Can you describe the canine uh, um, water yeah. source? Yeah, so if you can see the, uh, the, the water fountain uh, center of the center right of the screen, down at the very bottom you see a, 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 an additional drinking fountain. That fills up when you push the button and the dog can drink out of that. Wow. It's going to be great. Yeah, very popular. And, and the newer styles of uh, drinking fountains also contain water uh, bottle filling stations, were, which are extremely popular nowadays. Most people have some sort of a bottle uh, with them that they can just refill. Uh, lastly, we, uh, not lastly, second to lastly, we talked about flagpoles. Um, and I've walked the site numerous times and identified a couple of areas that would be very nice to add uh, lit flagpoles. And we are recommending that we do add a flagpole in the approximate location of where I just flagged on the screen. Um, additionally, I've put together a little picture showing how it, it fits in with the park. It's right next to the existing um, monument sign. It's very visual to park users, very visual to cyclists, pedestrians, and cars driving by. So um, staff thinks it's a very welcome addition to the park, has uh, recommended approval of adding it to the, uh, to the design, and uh, would be happy to have uh, council's discussion on that. Good work. Um, lastly, there was one comment made about pedestrian connectivity and how popular it is for the residents to the north. Um, uh, staff has confirmed that that pedestrian um, program is still in place. Uh, we've checked the system and I've actually gone out there personally and pushed the button a couple times. It works when the pedestrian tries to cross north or south. All phases of traffic are stopped so that that can uh, be done as safely as possible. Um, if approved. Has, has anybody, uh, excuse me, I didn't mean to sure. interrupt you, I thought if you go back to the photograph before this one, can you, can you revert? Yeah, right there. Uh, with respect to that property in the upper right hand corner, there used to be a house there. We bought the house, we cleared it off, we cleared off the land, uh, we plant uh, there, I think, uh, and during uh, planting season, whenever that is. Um, has anybody come up with any kind of an idea, and I don't have one, uh, as to how we could tie that parcel of land with the um, with the park? And even do we want to? I mean, but I mean, the, the only thing I can think of is if you had a uh, an over the you had a bridge over the uh, traffic, uh, you would be able to park up there but that's the only thought i've come up with i'm just wondering if uh our staff or anybody else has uh, come up with any ideas um it's my understanding that that house or that that property is owned by the city's housing authority yes and, it is and that will probably be a discussion for a later uh day um as far as how to connect i think you've pretty much done as good a job as you can by prioritizing the pedestrian overall users in the area by putting in this 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 program essentially good point well thank you anyway keep sure. it on your mind maybe you'll come up with some brilliant idea or one of us well that's not likely but absolutely same. will do um one last uh bit of information if approved this afternoon 
that moves staff on to the preparation of construction documents with bidding and construction award winter uh, 2022, most likely starting sometime uh, quarter one, uh, yeah, quarter one of 2022 for construction. Um, if you have any questions, staff would be happy to answer those at this time. We also have uh, consultants and uh, other staff members on the line if there's any specific questions that I cannot answer. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ryan. Let's go ahead and Thank open you. up the public comment period. Uh, if any member of the public wishes to speak on this item, now is the time to do so. If you are participating on Zoom, you'd hit the raise hand button. If you're on your telephone, you would hit star nine now. Christy, do we have any speaker cards? We do not. Anyone here in person that did not fill out a speaker card that would like to speak on this item? Okay, let's go to our remote audience. Okay, not seeing anyone on the remote audience uh, that wishes to speak. Uh, I'll turn this back over to you, Mr. Mayor, the council. <clears throat> Thanks, Isaiah. What an exciting, wonderful project. It's gonna be just a, a great addition to our city. Uh, another example of, uh, of an amenity that uh, we're providing. Uh, any additional comments from any of yes, you? Yes, Mr. Mayor, if I may, a very yes. personal comment yes, on the park. And I refer to Mr. Gordon Moeller, who was on the council and mayor twice for 12 years. Through that time, Gordon tried, I think, two or three times to bring the subject up of buying this dilapidated property and expanding Wolferson Park which led unfortunately to not happening in his time while he was with us on earth. So I am sure that he is pleased and delighted to see this come through. I'm just sorry that he wasn't here to see it happen, but uh, bless you all, Ryan, for a wonderful job you and your staff for listening to all of the input from the meetings you had with residents and other people uh, I applaud you for all the input from the council and the residents that you took into consideration. With that said, if I may selfishly enough, may I make the recommendation? Yes, please. Thank you. The city council approved the concept design attached and direct staff prepare construction documents for the Michael S. Wolferson Park <coughs> expansion slash Project number CP2364. Thank you. All right, I'll second that. Thank uh, you, Christy. Christy, if you would, please. Council Member Hobart? Yes. Council Member Kite? Yes. Council Member Smotrich? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Townsend? Yes. Mayor Weil? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. All right. Go Mayor. Ahead. Mayor. Gordon, Gordon is happy. Yes. Richard, um, I was just thinking about uh, the potential item that we might put in the park in honor of Gordon. Uh, maybe if we're going to have a flag there, flagpole, maybe we could put a, some sort of a monument or um, item on that flag recognizing his participation in the city. Nice idea. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Ted. That would be wonderful. I certainly would appreciate it very much. And I'm sure he's looking down and appreciating it too right now. Okay. Right. Members of anybody to ever be on this council, I can tell you that. Yes. Ryan, if you'd make a note of it, please. <clears throat> Absolutely. The, uh, the next and last item will be an update uh, by our city manager of the uh, coronavirus disease 2019. This is certainly a, a big week for a report. If you would, Isaiah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, before I hand this over to Gabe Cotting, our director of marketing, uh, we're winding down on these, uh, which I think we're all thankful for. And uh, I just wanted to take a second to acknowledge the council uh, and city staff for their great work during the pandemic. Uh, our council chamber never closed to in-person attendance. We offered obviously remote attendance. Our city facilities have been open without appointment for over a year. Uh, the city has been able to accomplish a lot uh, during a very challenging period. 
so I just wanted to take a second and thank the council for their support of staff uh, during this very uh, tough year. Uh, we were able to accomplish a lot under difficult circumstances. So Gabe, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Hagerman. And I echo that. Thank you for your leadership on, on behalf of staff as well. And uh, so today, no action, just a couple updates. As you've seen, uh, Tuesday the 15th was opening day. So a lot of the restrictions were lifted. And then uh, even coming out in the news right now, Cal OSHA had just uh, discussed um, some of the workplace guidance, and that's in the works as we speak right now. So on in, in regards to a um, couple of the things that are winding down uh, that the city was was one of the first to do. So... As you remember, back December 1st, the only free testing sites that you could get a COVID test, uh, no-cost COVID test, was Desert Hot Springs and uh, Indio. And so we launched, with the council's uh, approval and permission, we launched our own at the library and observatory. To date, we'd have, we've had almost 42,000 tests conducted there. That's going to wind down tomorrow. That ends tomorrow. And I'm sure the group out there is glad they don't have to stand outside in the 120-degree heat. Uh, in other good news, our Great Plates program uh, was extended through July 9th, and then FEMA and Cal OES, OES uh, announced that that would be the end. So the program will come to a formal end on July 9th. And uh, to date, or we anticipate through the end of this, uh, through this program, or through, uh, I'm sorry, through today, we've delivered, um, we have about 371 participants. Uh, to date, we've delivered... 365,000, in excess of 365,000, which is a staggering number of meals in the last 14, and a, 14 months. Uh, and this, this uh, has delivered about $8 million to, um, to the local uh, restaurants in the community. So we're, uh, again, we were the only city to administer this program. Um, the county discontinued it in December, so we've been going an extra six months past even when the county went. So uh, this has been an amazing program for our restaurants, and we'll have a full recap um, at the council event, um, a council meeting after this, uh, after um, the the program uh, officially ends on July 9th. We'll have a full recap at that point. But so that was just some informational items there available for any questions. No action necessary for today. Just want to give those updates. Thank you. Thank you, Gabe. If I, Go if ahead. I could, Mr. Mayor, make um, yes. this comment. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been reading various things in various uh, newspapers. Um, some people caution them not to um, take off take off your uh, mask uh, just because we think things are over, that the bad stuff is over, that uh, there is still an element that uh, by wearing your mask when it's, you know, not uh, difficult to do it, uh, you know, it's one or two or three percent. Uh, I just point that out so that we not get too carried away with what we have achieved, which has been gigantic. But there are still loopholes in there. That's wise words, Dana. Uh, we still have to be very careful. No. Uh, without a doubt. And, you know, I would add to what Dana said, that now that we have this new variant that's coming around that seems to be even more contagious, I think more people will feel comfortable wearing their masks uh, in public places uh, for an extended time. And I think a lot of us still wear masks because of the uh, winds and the pollution and for our um, dust that blows and for our people who have allergies. So now it's if, if you want to continue wearing your mask, I think people uh, will find it beneficial uh, on occasion and just protect your uh, yourself and those around you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. any, any other comments? Uh, if not, uh, I'm looking for our learned uh, city council. Mr. Mayor, if we could just give, uh, since this is an agenda item, uh, the members of the public an opportunity to speak if they want to. Sure. So any member of the public that wishes to speak on this item, now is the time to do so. Uh, you would hit the raise hand button on Zoom or star nine on your telephone. Christy, do we have any speaker cards? We do not. Okay. Uh, anyone here in person that didn't fill out a speaker card that wishes to speak? 
All right, we will go to the remote audience and I'm not seeing anyone there either. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> All right, thank you, Isaiah. And there is our learned city council uh, who's gonna tell us what he's gonna cover during the recess. I promise you it will be short. So the council is gonna recess into closed session now uh, pursuant to government code section 54956.9D1 regarding the following existing litigation matters. Vacation rental owners and neighbors of Rancho Mirage RM Vacation Rentals LLC et al. versus City of Rancho Mirage and Save Rancho Mirage versus City of Rancho Mirage. So we only have two items to cover today. Very good. Okay. I'll see you on, see you on the other side. We will see you shortly. Uh, Isaiah, you want to advise the public if they want to stay on? Sure. Uh, uh, any reportable action will be reported on the link you are on. Uh, so if you wish to stay for that, you are welcome to wait. Uh, the city council will go to their separate closed session link and we will now recess into closed session. It's just after uh, 3.30, the city council took no reportable action in closed session. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>